A cold case out of Cleveland from the 1980s is on the verge of a breakthrough thanks to a new type of DNA testing. We're taking a look at the case of Barbara Blatnick in DBL's True Crime Chronicles. Barbara Blatnick's murder has captivated the Cleveland area for decades. The 17-year-old was a popular student at Erie View Catholic High School. She just turned 17. She was just a kid. It was Christmas, 1987. Barbara spent her last night alive at a party. She left with friends who brought her home and never saw her again. The next morning, tragedy shook the town. Oil and gas workers found Barbara's body in the woods, miles from her home. Whoever killed her beat her to death. Barbara was beaten and raped. She was found naked with only her class ring left on her finger. I always just was kind of thought we were just going to be one of those families that never knew because there was not enough evidence or samples. And it, unless somebody said, yeah, I did it. Investigators held on to her class ring and a small sample of DNA under Barbara's fingernail for years. Luckily, they have held on to this DNA that was underneath her fingernails uh, that she probably got when fighting her killer. Now, a new nonprofit called Porchlight is now taking on the case, paying $4,000 to conduct private DNA testing. I think our chances are really good um, with, with solving this case. I think it'll happen sooner than later. It's not your typical DNA tests we see at police departments. The nonprofit is looking at genetic DNA. It's the same type of testing used to identify Joseph D'Angelo, known as the Golden State Killer. The serial killer and rapist was caught last year after decades of crime thanks to genealogy testing. Barbara's family believes this new DNA testing could help track down the person responsible for killing her. And earlier today, we spoke with journalists at our sister station, WKYC in Cleveland, to get a deeper look at the case. We are joined now by investigative reporter Drew Horansky and investigative producer Phil Trexler from our sister station WKYC in Cleveland. Now this story, I mean for all of us, it gives you goosebumps, especially as parents mm. 17 years old. I just pray that the family gets justice. You both have been covering this case for months. Any updates? Well, I'd say the latest update is that uh, the unique group uh, nonprofit Porchlight has come up with some DNA uh, profile that is now currently being tested. They did some fundraising, they got the money, and it's currently being tested. And uh, in fact, they've even come up with a partial profile um, that have yet to be released because of the ongoing investigation. But there is movement forward. Well, th that kind of leads me to my next uh, question for because there's so many cases. Why did the nonprofit Porchlight decide to pick up this case? Well, for one thing, it's very expensive to do as much as four to five thousand dollars to do this DNA testing. But another thing that we learned is that a lot of departments can look certainly in their own databases, but they would only be limited to people already in that database, people who are likely convicted of a crime. What this allows them to do is to look outside of that database to people who have not been convicted, people who have submitted to genealogy sites. Wow. Certainly widens the net casts it out much bigger than they would if they just looked internally within their own department. Wow. Why did it take a nonprofit to make this happen? So, like, why can't suburban Cleveland police do the DNA testing on their own? Good question. That is. Yeah, there, there's, some, there's some issues there with uh, the current genealogy community and law enforcement. Um, they're trying to set up the new rules. Of course, there were some very high profile cases last year um, and over the years that they, that they have solved and resolved. But uh, the, the disconnect is, is there, so I think it's better now that a private nonprofit works with the genealogy community to do the testing and keep law enforcement to the side. It's, it's what everybody's comfortable now until their new rules are really set in stone. And sadly, a lot of these cold cases get overlooked as well. Departments have fresher cases to be working on. And, you know, we've seen in a number of cases that these, over time, they are sort of out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, and Drew and Phil, this is the same testing used to track down the Golden State Killer. Do you feel it will That's bring right. the same success to this case? And how soon can we expect results? 
It certainly has the potential to. The family's hoping and Porchlight is hoping that perhaps by Christmas time they could have oh. a full DNA profile. Keep oh in mind, goodness. in this case, what Barbara was able to do was to scrape. She used her nails to defend herself against her attacker. And apparently that is a very good bit of DNA to get. It gives a, a stronger profile. So the hope is that certainly sooner rather than later with the money that has been ponied up that can help expedite this a little bit. The hope is that by Christmas time and again, as Phil had mentioned, they already have a sense of ethnicity and who this person may be. Wow. One step closer. Uh, one step closer. We pray that they get the justice. Uh, thank you, Drew and Phil. And DBL Nation, if you want to read more on this case, go to WKYC.com.